is the new Wahoo Roam 2.0. It's an improvement over the previous generation and original Wahoo Roam. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it, explain how it fits into the wider Wahoo ecosystem, and also all the improvements that it has over the previous Roam. And that's not all, we've actually got three of them to give away. So, well, there's a link in the description below. The first thing I need to point out is that this isn't a review, but we have been using Wahoo head units here at GCN since 2017, and I do really, really rate them. What I am gonna do is just explain to you all the features of the device, starting with the headline stats. According to Wahoo, the roam is for those riders who see each ride as a new adventure. What this means is that it's got a much bigger screen than the Bolt. So for comparison, you can see if I put the two side by side here. The bigger screen makes it better for navigation because you can just, well, fit more map on there. But it's also useful for riders whose eyesight isn't as good and maybe struggles to see a smaller screen. My septuagenarian dad loves the Rome for that exact reason, because you can zoom in on the stats and you can make say things like your speed and your other stats like really big, look, you can just go massive on it. By virtue of a bigger battery, the Rome has more battery life than the Bolt. So it's 17 hours compared to 15. And an improvement over the previous Rome is the colors on the screen. So it's up to 64 from eight, which helps you see maps a little bit clearer. There's also been a massive increase in memory size, up to 32 gigabytes from four gigabytes on the previous Rome. And this is really useful for storing all of your routes, your maps, and your Strava Live segments. You've also got dual band GPS on here as well for even greater location accuracy and helping you maintain that accuracy even when you're under dense tree cover like this. Something that not all GPS units have. Now I appreciate that not everyone is you know, hugely familiar uh, with the Wahoo computers. And so with the key stats out of the way, I'm gonna just recap a bit about the Wahoo range and what sets them apart. So the original Element computer came out in 2015. And the key sort of feature of it was that it paired with your smartphone and it harnessed the power of your smartphone to then sort of mirror what was on the screen of the GPS unit. And that's a feature that's kind of remained through to this latest one. A common trait with all Wahoo head units is the Element app. This connects to your phone via Bluetooth and it's great because it means you don't have to faff around with configuring settings on the device itself. You can do everything in the app. So you can set all the screens, all the data fields that you have, customize them where different data fields are and exactly what you have on there. It's much easier to do on the phone. It makes total sense uh, because your phone is a more powerful computer. It also means that you don't have um, a touch screen on the device because you're using the one on your phone. And the advantage of that is, well, touch screens can be a bit awkward to use when you've got gloves on, uh, or if it's just they get wet from rain or just sweat. You can also connect third-party apps to the Element app, and when you press stop on your ride, it automatically syncs the ride onto the phone. So, well, within moments of finishing, you press stop, and then your ride is automatically uploaded to whatever app you want to use, whether that's Komoot, Strava, Training Peaks, or whatever, all three. One of the nicest features, though, is how simple it is to get routes onto the device. So you can actually plot routes uh, in the Element app itself. You can input a destination and it'll create a route there for you. Or if you want to just retrace your ride back to where you've, you've come from or sort of cut it short if you've bitten off more than you can chew, you can do that. Um, or you can actually put GPX uh, files in into the app and then transfer them onto the device really easily if they've been emailed to you or WhatsApped to you, you can just open them in the Element app. Or you can create routes on say apps like Komoot and then if your Komoot account has enabled and, and paired with the Element app, then the routes that you create in Komoot will automatically appear in the app and then it's just a click of a button basically and you can just sync them over onto the device which is just dead easy.
There's a live track feature too, where anyone that you share a link with can see your location, which is a nice safety feature. And all of these features are found on both the Wahoo Rogue, the smaller Bolt, and the uh, Rival Watch too. Although you can't navigate on the Rival Watch, but it does connect to the Element app to unlock more features. Well, that's the Wahoo ecosystem. Well, some of it anyway. You've also got the Kicker indoor trainers, which the head units can control, and the Wahoo system uh, training software, which you can download workouts from and put them on the head units. But I've got to draw the line somewhere and actually start talking about the new Roam. So, as mentioned, the Roam is the bigger of the two head units. And in addition to the bigger battery, bigger screen, bigger memory, it's got some additional hardware in there too. So there's an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a compass built into it. Now, quite strangely, at present, they don't actually have a function, but Wahoo's included them to future-proof the device. And this is hardware that could be unlocked and utilized in future firmware updates. Wahoo just says it has some exciting ideas about how they could be used, I think it's pretty cool, but I'm not an expert on these things. But if you are and you have any ideas about how they could be used, let us know in the comments below. Other improvements include the charging port, which has been updated from a micro USB on the previous one to the more modern and slightly faster charging USB-C. It's also a bit more practical as well, because USB-C is said to be more waterproof. The three buttons here at the bottom are now convex rather than concave, but having them raised, they, they reckon that that's going to be easier when you've got gloves on to sort of feel them and press them as well. There's some new integrations too, so you can now pair uh, like the Super Sapiens uh, Libre Sense glucose monitors on to the device as well, just in the same way that you'd pair any other sensor like your power meter or your heart rate monitor. But then you can now view your sort of glucose uh, monitoring data, like your blood glucose levels on the device on screen and then analyze it afterwards, which is really useful for diabetic riders or just you know, really serious athletes. There's an ambient light sensor too, so the screen can automatically adjust its brightness uh, depending on the light levels, which is well, useful if you go through a tunnel. There's also a new feature called Summit Segments, which I think is really cool. When you upload a route onto the device, it uses a data algorithm to work out where the climbs are on the device and then creates a page which you can configure that has all the climbs on it and all the details of them. And then when you reach one of those climbs on your route, it then sort of presents it like a segment screen and guides you up it, telling you about the gradient and how much further you've got to go and stuff like that. Now this is kind of like the sort of pacing notes that pros, you know, we see them sellotape them to their stems, but you know, a more modern version, it's now on your head unit. I think it's brilliant. This is a separate thing from Strava Live segments, although you can have those on the device too. So there you have it, the new Roam 2.0. If you've got any questions about it, let us know down in the comments section below. And the overall thing I would say is that if I was racing or riding for performance, I'd probably opt for the Bolt. But if I was exploring, going on an adventure or bikepacking, personally, I'd opt for the roam but let us know which one you'd pick and uh, if you found this video useful give it a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one bye oh, it's starting to rain now i'm gonna find a cafe right fortunately i will be easily able to navigate to one with this excellent navigation device